Good morning, So Hills Kids. All right, so we're in a different spot this morning. Uh, can anybody guess where we are? Huh? Huh? Any guesses? We're. Let me. Uh, I'll give you a hint. We're up high. Mm-hmm. Um, we are outside. Yeah. Nice. Um, we are at City Station. Oh. That's a big hint right there. Have you got it yet? Have you got it yet? All right. Maybe you guessed it. We are on the roof of City Station. Oh, yeah. Check it out. Check out the view. hear me I don't know if you could hear me over there with CVS I don't know if you could see it I had to put you way up there yep. all right so the reason that we're up here is because our Bible story actually takes place on a rooftop today it's pretty cool we're jumping in Sam you got anything uh, dude I'm excited uh, you might uh, get a sneak peek of me oh there, yeah so be ready for that one that's it's right a, it's a really good story hey and we're singing made in the image again you know what's cool about this song we've been singing it for the past couple weeks yeah is we're made in the image of God. Guess what God does? He helps. He supports. And that's what we can do as friends. And that's what this story today is all about. So enjoy the song. Sing it. You should know it by now. And we will see you later. Bye. God so love that He changed the world. We can change the world. In the beginning, when God made people, He made a boy, He made a girl. Gave us dominion over creation. Told us to go into all the world. We were made in the image of God. Every man, woman, boy, and girl. We were made in the image of God. God so loved that He changed the world. We can change the world. Made in the image, we were made in the image of. Made in the image, we were made. God made people, He made a boy, He made a girl, gave us dominion over creation, told us to go into all the world. We were made in the image of God, every man, woman, boy, and girl. We were made in the image of God, God so loved. and it's time to show off some creativity.
Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. That's right, God made you out of about 30 trillion building blocks that we call cells. And I'm about to use this many building blocks to create the International Space Station. The one I'm making is much smaller. When building a complicated structure like this, it helps to have creative building technique. Some people count out all the blocks and follow the instructions to the letter. I call these people the building block robots. Insert piece 325B into a piece 356-D. Some people can just look at a picture of the International Space Station and know exactly where every little piece goes. These people are called the visionaries. Yes, I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it, it's picturesque, that piece goes there, and we bring that piece in and it comes together. I'm the kind of person who falls into the third category. I use the just wing it technique. I'm a just wing it -er, er person. I mean, come on, these, these are toys. They're, they're supposed to be fun. I how much fun is that? Now let's get creative, but most of all, let's have some fun. Uh, so I don't know, just give me uh, like 15 minutes. I'll get this all, all worked out. Why? I just, there's, there's just too many blocks. There's too many blocks. There's, there's just, I've, I've been looking, there's this one little gray piece that I need to make it Perfect, and I can't find it anywhere. This is this is supposed to be fun. I'm supposed to be having fun, and this isn't fun at all. Wee wee wee! There it is. Oh no! Hold on. Nobody move. I just lost it. There's a little gray piece. <sighs> Clearly, I could use a hand here. Probably a few hands. The story today is about a guy who needed a hand, and his friends who used their hands and their head to get him some help. They worked together. Say, that's not a bad idea. I've got to make some phone calls. See you in a bit. Hey, so those kids, welcome to your Bible story time. I'm joined by Sam, and he knows nothing about what he's doing because I thought that that would be more fun. He's got four balloons. I have four sticks. Okay. And those are for later. So for now, Sam, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to balance these balloons okay. up in the air okay. for one minute without using anything but your hands. You can't use your head. You can't use the wall. And I don't want them to touch the ground. All four up in the air on your mark. Uh, you ready? Okay. Do you need one up in the air to start? Yeah, we'll just... I can help. We'll I, just, I can help. Okay. On your mark. Get set. Go. All right, keep them up in the air. All four of them. Don't let the pink one fall. It's very close. Don't hit the camera, be careful. Or oh, orange is down. Oh, no. Blue's down, green's down, and pink's down. How long did that make it? <laughs> like five seconds. I'd say it was at least seven. Um, I got a question for you. Yeah. Let's say I was to do this challenge again, but you had a friend. How okay. do you think you'd do it? Probably a lot better because four hands are better than two. Well, let's say you had four friends. How would oh, you do? That would be way easier. What if you had 4,000 friends I don't, and four balloons? Don't think the balloons would ever touch the ground. That it would probably be impossible. Why yes. Be, like, that's crazy. Yeah, that's all See, people. the thing is, teamwork makes the dream work. Do okay. you agree? I, I mean, I would agree after that for sure. You would agree with teamwork makes the dream work? Yeah, it does. It's pretty easy to say. It might be a little bit harder to do. Let's say, Sam, you are a... Um, uh, an actor. Okay. And you worked on all of these lines. You've got a wonderful play. It's going to show tonight at 7 o'clock, and, and it's going to be the best, but... And you have the lead role. You have all your lines memorized. It's going to be cake. You're ready for this. But you have a fever. Oh. Could be COVID. I don't know. Mm. Definitely going to stay home, though. Yeah. And you have an understudy. And teamwork makes the dream work, right? But I wanted to do it. Yeah, and you don't get to do it anymore. But the show's got to go on. Or if maybe maybe that's not your thing. Maybe you are a baseball player? Softball totally, player? Totally. And you're... Oh, the pitcher. Uh, you yeah. have muscular arms. <laughs> you want to show it off? No. I'm good. Okay, so let's say you're the pitcher with that arm. Yes. And you're, you're up, you're playing. It's the 
bottom of the ninth. That's it. We're not sports guys. At least I'm not. And you're not doing too well. Yeah. So the catcher does the little hand signal thing. Mm -hmm. You throw it horribly. Another person gets on base. And and your coach is worried. So he goes, say, time out. He walks out. He goes, Sam, here's the thing. You've done good. You're winning so far. But uh, I'm going to have to kick you off the mound and get another guy in. Because teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, not as easy that time. No, it's not. Or maybe for the gamers. I've been there before. Ooh. Mario, there's that last level where there's the giant guy that just goes like uh, this, yeah. destroys everything, and it's super hard, and you yeah. keep trying to play. You keep trying to do it, and then your turn's up, and you're not able to finish, and your friend comes in and mm. beats the game. Yep. Teamwork makes the dream work. It's not always easy, especially when you're the one that needs the help. Sometimes it does work out good, but not necessarily how you want it to, but it kind of depends on your frame of mind. Because you see, the play did go on. Mm -hmm. It was a success, which was the goal. Yeah. And finishing out the game with a strong pitcher that wins, that's good. And beating the game, that's good. But sometimes it means you got to swallow your pride a little bit. Sometimes teamwork makes the dream work it means that you got to be humble and allow someone else to succeed or to lead or to do something. Yeah. Well, today, we're talking about creativity and teamwork, yeah. and there's a Bible story that I think illustrates this right. amazingly. It's found in the book of Mark, chapter 2, and right here, we see what's going on. We see that Jesus is, here, I'll let you hold right, the Bible. I got you, I got you. Jesus is entering Capernaum? Capernaum? How do you say that word? Oh, shit, it's something close to that. Cap Capernaum. Capernaum. It's an actual place. I yeah. could have Googled it and figured out how to say it. Oops. Well, he was going into this. Andrew made me some fancy sticks. And I want to use them. Ha! Ha ha. Oh. Huh? Oh, huh? I like it. He was going into a house oh, okay. to teach and to preach because that's okay. what Jesus did all the time. He yep. would go teach and preach. And there was this guy. Um, he he lied on a mat. It's a mat. It's flat. You yeah, see it? I see it. I okay, good. I'm not the most creative guy. And the reason he laid on this mat was because he was paralyzed. All right. His legs didn't run. Like, this is a big deal. Back okay. in Bible days, especially, because if you're not able to work and you're not able to eat, and if you're not able to eat, you die. Oh, this got serious see, quick. Yeah, it seems. Well, this guy was paralyzed, and he wasn't able to walk. He wasn't able to leave and go to the house where Jesus mm. was teaching at. But I have good news. He wasn't able to work, but he did have uh, four friends. You got to talk about the camera. Hey, there you go. It kind of looks like a pea. It's close. Uh, Four friends, and these four friends were great friends, actually. I love this Bible story because it shows how good of friends they were. They did something amazing. They asked their friend to lay down on his mat, or maybe it's his mat, his mat, and they, we'll do this way, this way's better. They each grabbed a corner of the mat, and they carried their friend to the home where Jesus was staying at. Have you ever carried a person before? I've tried. It's kind of hard. It is kind of hard. Let's picture like if you were trying to carry me in a mat oh, yeah. up to there, that's going to take some work. Yeah. What about if we were going to try to carry a friend over to Food Depot? Oh, that would be sweaty. I would be very sweaty. Yeah. Or how about to the other side of town? Oh. That's a lot of work. So these friends, they were dedicated friends. They were very loving friends, and they were well, creative friends, actually. I love it. So they got this mat. They each grabbed a corner. Their friend laid on the mat, and they carried their friend to the house, and they made it. Isn't that good news? That's really good news. It would have been a bad story if they just gave up halfway. Yeah. But they made it to the house. <laughs> but the house was full because Jesus had been growing in popularity. He'd go out and teach and heal. He, remember, he healed that guy with the skin disease. Mm -hmm. What's that called? Uh, leprosy. Leprosy? Yeah. Ooh. 
And Jesus healed him, and so more people would hear about him. More people came, and the house was packed out. They weren't practicing social distancing. Uh, and this house was completely packed out, so when they showed up, they tried to squeeze in, and they weren't able to. Oh. But they got creative. They looked around the house until they found some stairs. Huh? Or maybe it was a ladder. I don't really know, but I can make stairs. And they climbed up to the roof of the house. Now, our roofs today are pretty steep and, like, different than back then. It, houses back then were often made with, like, some mud and some bricks and some more mud and some more bricks. And so it was a brick and mud house. They they got onto the roof of this house, and they they got very creative as friends. They... they They dug a hole in the roof, and they lowered their friend down on the mat in the hole in the roof and laid him at Jesus' feet. Actually, can you read that verse right there? All right, and it says, but they could not get him close to Jesus because of the crowd. So they made a hole by digging through the roof above Jesus, and then they lowered the man through it on a mat. Oh, so imagine this for a second, and maybe you need to close your eyes to imagine. Yeah. You're sitting there listening to Jesus. He's preaching and he's teaching, and then all of a sudden, like the, you hear this rumbling noise, and and then the like dust starts falling from the the ceiling, and maybe Jeff over there sneezes from the dust, and then you see some light, and then like some hands reaching through the muddy brick roof, and then there's a hole, and then they're starting to lower a dude down at the feet of Jesus, and Jesus doesn't get angry. He doesn't get even mad about the hole in the roof. Yeah. He sees the faith in these guys and he, he says some amazing stuff. Keep reading. All right, it says, Jesus saw their faith. Okay. So he said to the man, Son, your sins are forgiven. And Jesus had all authority, so he can forgive sins. And it actually goes on to talk about how he healed the man. He said to pick up his mat and walk out of there. And the man stood up, picked up his mat, and walked out of there. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm sitting there and watching all this happen, I'm, it's gonna blow my mind. One, the roof, come yeah. on. But two, this man who was paralyzed, that everybody has known for years is paralyzed, is now able to walk. And Jesus forgave his sins and, and healed him. And man, those friends up there, they carried him all that way. This is awesome. This is a great example of friendship. It's a great example of creativity. And I think it's just a great example for us because I don't know about you, but I think if I was the friend in this situation, I would try to help out by maybe giving a glass of water. Maybe I'd make them a meal. I don't know if I'd have the creativity to think, let's get a mat and let's carry them and carry them all the way to the other side of town and. And if there's no room, we're going to climb up to the roof and dig a hole through the ceiling and lower him down to Jesus and just have faith that Jesus can heal him. But these friends, they did that. These friends were super creative. They were awesome. Now, when I think about this story, I think about one of the things that a lot of us are dealing with right now. It's isolation. Mm -hmm. A lot of us aren't able to hang out with other people. Some people, school started back. Other people are waiting for school to start. And some people, it's gonna be a while before school starts <clears throat> and feeling isolated is no good and especially if you are stepping away from people and not allowing your friends to work together but how beautiful is it when we actually do stuff together when we come together and we use our creativity and show like the love of God to other people so Sam um, one of our core values as a church is actually that we are family mm -hmm. That we belong to one another. And that's found in the book of Romans, uh, chapter 12, verse 4 and 5. It says, just as our bodies have many parts and each part has its own special function, so it is with Christ's body. That we have, have many parts of one body, but we all belong to one another. And if we're creative and we're, we're realizing we're made in the image of God and we have these gifts, we can use these gifts to make a beautiful thing called the church. So Sam, let's think back a little bit. Let's say uh, you're playing baseball, mm -hmm. and you uh, 
get kicked out of the game. You're no longer the pitcher. Mm -hmm. Teamwork does move things forward. And sometimes you got to swallow your pride a little bit and allow that to happen. But man, it's such a more beautiful thing. Even the guy that came through the hole in the roof, he had to swallow his pride a little bit to allow his friends to lower him down. And this is something that we can do every day. Not like tear holes in roofs and crazy stuff like yeah. that. Unless God's calling you to it, then tear it on home. But there are ways that you can use your gifts. There's ways that you could be creative to help out. So let's say, Sam, you're playing baseball. Okay. And one of your friends gets hurt, like real bad. Like, like they may have even broken their arm. Hmm. <clears throat> you're sitting there with four friends and you go, uh-oh, we need help. But what could you do in this situation to use your gifts, to show creativity and love, and to just come together to make something happen instead of just going, oh no, oh no, oh no. What could you do? Um, uh, I could go get him something like water or something if he needs that. Okay. Uh, that would help take my mind off of things. Yeah, uh, you can tell jokes oh okay maybe. so you're Trying sitting there people. maybe even waiting on an ambulance yeah. to come instead of just worrying you can tell uh -huh. some jokes yeah i and like it i like it get help um after the fact you can get your whole team together and make a card or get a gift for him that's awesome um, those are great examples because yeah. it takes some creativity initiative for sure we talked about initiative a while back and and man this this is something that i do want us to practice though this is something i want you to think about God created you to work with other people. You have gifts. You were created in God's image. And so I think it's just a beautiful thing when we use our gifts to serve one another, to just make life better for one another. So do me a favor. Don't be isolated. Don't, like, rely on yourself. Remember, you got friends. You got family that are here for you. We are the church, and we belong to one another. We're family. So let's do that. Let's be creative. Think about it. you got a gift. I hope you can use it for God and his glory. Let's pray, and we'll jump into what's next. Father, I thank you for giving us gifts. Thank you for giving me gifts that I can use them to be more like you, to display you and tell others about you. God, help us to think creatively to stop and remember that you made us and man we could do some amazing things for you so god whether it's telling jokes to a friend that's hurt or getting them water or stopping to pray for them or i don't even know anything that can come up help us to see those things and then help us to not be lazy take the initiative to to be the church and god if there's anyone that's feeling isolated right now help them to remember they're not alone that uh, they can reach out for help. God, you are good. We love you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can accomplish a lot when you're being creative. You can cure diseases. You can design buildings. You can build an international space station out of blocks. Pretty amazing, right? But here's a little secret. You can almost always accomplish more by being creative with others. Other people can help you come up with ideas you've never had before. Other people can help you put your ideas to work faster and better than you can do on your own. And just like in our story of the friends who helped the man who couldn't walk, other people can help solve your problems. And when the problem's too big, other people can lead you to Jesus. No problem's too big for him. When we're creative, we reflect who God is to the people around us. And when we work with others, when we use our unique creative techniques with the unique creative techniques of other people, we can really show the world how uniquely creative God is. That's the one thing to remember today. God created you to work with others. You know, I didn't build this thing all by myself. I called in a bunch of people to help. Some were building block robots, and some were visionaries. And some, like me, brought the fun. And we were just winging it, man. Whee!
Just kidding. I'll see you next time.